encountered, in this case, I was in Papua New Guinea, out in the, the wilderness, in the jungle. And what I found was that um, in spite of all the incredible efforts being made by the organization of which I was a part at the time, many of those who really needed Bibles in their own language were just beyond the capacity of the institutional reach, the reach of the institution. Mm -hmm. And so what we started to recognize was that um, if you, for example, have a, a biblical resource or a Bible in English, just at the level of language use, anyone who is bilingual in English could at least technically use that, use that resource. But it would be limited to those who are bilingual in English. Mm -hmm. But then you look at, okay, well, if we also had that resource available in, in Spanish and maybe Chinese or Arabic, and the more languages you add to that, the greater the aggregate reach of that resource. We started to realize there are about 45 or 50 major languages that we call gateway languages that if we were to make that resource available in all 45 or so of those languages, we would cover 100% of the people groups of the world through patterns of bilingualism. But then we get into the much more complex matter of the licensing obstacle. Because even if you can understand a resource in a language, you can't necessarily use it the way you need to in your own theological formation and to equip others to grow, to become mature disciples of Jesus because uh, content has ownership rights associated with it. Mm. The challenge is that no one meant it to be this way. Certainly no one in the church woke up one morning and said, hey, I think I could really just make a killing off of restricting access to the Bible. At least I don't know of anyone who, who's gonna do that. Yeah. Uh, the, the whole copyright thing today really just kind of happened. At least we woke up one day and realized the world has changed in ways that we weren't expecting. And now you create anything and it has copyright associated with it. And the default is all rights are reserved to the creator. Mm. So that creates a dynamic where if you create something, talking about power, you have all the power over how yeah. others use that. Yeah. And that's what got us thinking, maybe there's a more effective way to, uh, to consider content yeah. ownership. That we're really seeing globally um, patterns of 21st century uh, missiology, or at least the, the, how the church and the mission of the church is unfolding, is looking a lot like first century mm. patterns that we're seeing. Yeah, okay. And I'm really excited about that. I don't know if you can say excited and missiology in the same sentence, but uh, <laughs> I, we'll, we'll try it. Um, but I'm excited about that because I think it, it creates a context where we can recover a lot of the things that have historically been missing from a purely institutional approach. And I don't yeah. mean that in a pejorative way, yeah. just that it was the best that was capable yeah. at that time. Of course. But there's a new day upon yeah. us now.